Tonight, we take pleasure in bringing you Suspense, a weekly anthology of notable melodramas from stage and screen, fiction and radio, presented each week to bring you to the edge of your chair, to keep you in Suspense. During the 19th century, an unusually repugnant form of criminal activity was rampant throughout North America and Europe, grave robbing. Whether to supply doctors with cadavers for research purposes or simply to pilfer the deceased's valuables, the practice became so commonplace that it spawned a cottage industry devoted to safeguarding burial sites by a variety of ingenious means. But it wasn't always humans that desecrated the resting places of the dead. Such was the case in Salem, Massachusetts, where one of the town's oldest cemeteries earned an especially unsavory reputation for its invasive visitors. Mr. Masson, I must admit to reservations about the interment here of my beloved Mordecai. Really, Mrs. Prynne? Yes, really, Mr. Masson. I'll have you know that I have of late become privy to certain stories concerning this cemetery. Hmm. And what stories might they be, Mrs. Prynne? Stories concerning the vast hordes of rats which frequent these grounds. Nothing but old wives' tales. There's nary a rat to be found here. I wish I could believe that, Mr. Masson, but the stories are quite widespread. How generations ago a colony of rats came up from the wharves and settled here in the graveyard, and how they became abnormally large, glutting upon the dead. Not a word of truth to it. And perhaps not just upon the dead, for I have also learned that your predecessor, God rest his soul, died here under most suspicious circumstances. Now he was an old codger anyway. Uh, uh, not to speak ill of the dead, mind you, but it was his time. In fact, it would not be out of the question, Mr. Masson, for this graveyard to be closed down entirely due to its neglected condition. Well... Mr. Masson! All right, all right. I do apologize for withholding the truth from you, Mrs. Prynne, but I'm getting up there in years myself. And I'm afeard that if the cemetery closes, I'll end up in the poorhouse. And that's no place for a hard-working, God-fearing man to be. So the stories are true? I, I do the best I can. I've set traps for them, put poisoned food by their burrows, even tried shooting them. But the best I can do is keep them under control. I dare any man in Salem to do better. And the stories... Of the rats desecrating the dead? They're true. But I swear to you, on my own mother's grave, that no rat will disturb a hair on your beloved Mordecai's head. Truly, Mr. Masson? Cross me up, Mrs. Prynne. My men Simmons and I will stand watch over his grave every night if need be. Well, I do thank you, Mr. Masson. I should like to compensate you for your additional efforts. No, I wouldn't dream of it, Mrs. Prynne. Just doing our duty. Even though it will mean that young Simmons will be spending more time away from his wife and little ones. Oh, dear. Really? In that case, I insist. Please, pass this along to Simmons as some measure of recompense for his family. Oh, God bless you, Mrs. Prynne. I'm sure that young Simmons will be most grateful. It's quite all right, Mr. Masson. Well, I really should be going before nightfall. Many thanks to you and Simmons for watching over my Mordecai. <laughs> Tis my honor to do so, madam. Good day, Mrs. Prynne. 
Good day, Mr. Masson. You hear all that, Simmons? Aye, every word. So, uh, then this money must be mine, eh? Tell you what, you conjure up a wife and kids, and it's all yours. In the meantime, I'll hold on to it. For safekeeping, of course. <laughs> of course. So, what's on the docket for tonight? Did you not hear? I made Mrs. Prynne a solemn vow to make sure that her beloved Mordecai is not disturbed by any rats. And what better way to prevent that than to disturb him ourselves? Aye, tis the Christian thing to do. <laughs> <laughs> we wait till eleven o'clock, just in case there are any late mourners. I'll have spades and lanterns ready. So, do we have a buyer for Prin? Oh, Doc Thurbert's always in need of <clears throat> fresh cadavers, so he'll take this one. No questions asked. <clears throat> Minus the gold fillings, of course. <laughs> <laughs> I had a mouthful of them, and an especially fine set of cufflinks. Oh, and a genuine pearl stick pin. <laughs> Oh, you don't miss a thing, do you? Well, when a fella has a wife and we ones at home, then... <laughs> <laughs> ah, I sure hope those filthy little monsters haven't gotten to him already. Aye, that'd be the third time this week. Hey, maybe they're undercutting us, eh? Taking the cadavers to the medical school themselves. <laughs> Sorry. We can't afford to lose this one. So put your back into it. <clears throat> so... You, uh, you know about how the rats came to this cemetery? Aye. The rats have been here <clears throat> nigh as long as the graveyard itself. It said they came off of ships from distant ports with <clears throat> strange cargoes. Oh, they were big to start with, and kept growing on account of having so many corpses to feed upon. And now, well, <clears throat> you've seen them yourself. Big as a full-sized alley cat, and twice as mean. Aye, that they are. But it is not just their unnatural size that folks find, well, perplexing. Every time we open a grave, only to find that the rats have beat us to it, the coffin's always been gnawed open at the end. That's never the sides, not even once. It's as if the little beasties just knew. Huh. Well... And why do they carry off the corpses, eh? Huh? Why not just feast on the rotting flesh right where it lay? It's as if some unseen hand guided their actions. Do you hear yourself, you old woman? Some unseen hand. <laughs> Next we'll be going on about there are worse things than rats crawling in the unhallowed earth beneath Salem, more abundant human creatures that still exist in forgotten burrows. <laughs> you shouldn't be so quick to laugh off that which you cannot explain. And you shouldn't be so quick to lend credence to superstitious nonsense when there be rational explanations. Oh, so just what are these rational explanations then? I'll have to wait, my boy. Let's clear the lid. Wait, do you hear that? That, that? that scratching? The rats! They've beaten us to Prin! Hurry, pry the lid! <coughs> you have that pepper box pistol? We may be needing it. I have it. Hurry, hurry! Last it! Gone! Oh, wait, can you hear? I. They have not gone far with our prize, but 
Oh, to be so close. <laughs> We're not done yet, lad. What? We're going in after them. Are, are you daft? Going crawling down into them warrens? Oh, they've not gone far. We'll catch up with them in no time. And then what? Y you've seen the size of him. It must be hundreds down there, ferocious little devils with mouths full of needle-sharp fangs, and, and you want us to go into their lairs? They're just rats. They'll flee at the very sight of us. Well, you can learn that for yourself, because there's no way I'm sitting foot down there. We're both going. But how do we even know we'll fit? Our rats have been dragging corpses through them tunnels for years. We'll fit. You go first. And take a lantern. Oh, Lord. Have mercy on the poor sinner. It's all damp and slimy. What did you expect with all the rain we've had? <clears throat> and the stench, it's, it's like carrion. Quit your belly aching and keep moving. Massa. What now? It ain't just the stench and the damp and the oversized rodents that have me spooked. Now, here we go with the old wives' tales. Look, you didn't grow up here in ancient witch-hunted Salem, but I did. And the tales me grandmother told me as a little shaver. Yeah, be carrying on like a little shaver now. Look, the old days, when Cotton Mather hunted down the colts that worship Hecate and the dark Magna Mater. And they're long past, but even today, blasphemous secrets are said to be hidden below the surface where forgotten pagan rites are still celebrated in defiance of law and sanity. No, not but superstitious blather. Me Graham told me of ghoulish beings that dwelt underground that had the power of commanding the rats, marshalling them like horrible armies. Simmons. They sent the rats abroad to carry messages and to rob graves. Simmons. The old fable of the Pied Piper, it, it hides a blasphemous truth. Simmons. Oh, Safe preservers. The world's gonna collapse. Simmons, keep your voice down. Listen, we gotta get out of here. Do you hear me? We gotta get out of here. Get hold of yourself, man. We're almost caught up with the thieving little bastard. No! All right, all right. This... The burrow, it's too narrow to turn around in. Oh, Lord. Oh, saints preserve us. Hold on, hold on. Okay. Um, we passed a couple of side tunnels already. Is there one anywhere, Ed? Simmons. Simmons! There's uh, one just ahead on the left. Uh, maybe 15 feet further. Calm yourself, lad. Let's go forward a wee bit further. Then we use that side tunnel to get ourselves turned back around. All right. Just keep your wits about you, Simmons. We'll be topside again before you know it. If you say so, Masson. If you say so.
Up out there. Good. Now you need to go a little farther straight ahead while I get myself reversed. Then all you do is crawl backwards a few feet and turn yourself around. We'll be out of here in no time. Sure. Yeah, sure we will. And set the lantern in the side tunnel as you pass. I'll be needing it to guide us back out of this hell maze. Sure. Sure. Just about in. Turning around now. What the devil? What? What's there? Oh, I, I suppose the rats don't devour every last corpse they drag into these tunnels. But there's one just a few feet ahead of me, all propped up like. Masson, back out now. Hmm. Huh. Reckon it's been here for a while, too. Looks to be almost mummified. Masset, back out now. Wait, it's almost as if... as if the damn thing is moving. Back out now! No, back out! It is moving. Go oh, get out of my way! What is that? It's one of those blasphemous things from the old stories. <gasps> it's summoning its legions of rats. Hurry! I'm being moved as fast as I can. Rock in the roof of the warren. Oh, if I can dislodge it, maybe I can collapse the tunnel behind me and hold those monsters at bay till I get out. Almost there. Just one more. No! My lantern! Broken! Oh, pitch black all around. And those minions of hell claw on their way to get to me. Oh, oh, oh. Get a grip on yourself, Masson. The way out cannot be much further. Just feel your way along the wall, and you'll be above ground before you know it. Oh, but hurry, man. Hurry! Where be that blasted hole out of here? No! Oh, no! Stay back! Stay back! Stay back, damn you! I said stay back! Ah! Oh. 
Oh, leave me be! Leave me be! Ow! No! No! Oh, sweet Jesus, please let me find that owl! That's it! I found it! I found a way out of this owl! I just need a little time. Oh, I'll collapse the entrance behind me. That'll keep the rats at bay long enough for me to get out. Oh, praise be to God. What the devil? The lid? Sealed? Wow! How? No! No! It is the wrong grave! I'm in the wrong grave! No! So ends The Graveyard Rats by John C. Alzadek and Dana Perry Hayes. Tonight's story of Suspense. Suspense is produced by Blue Hours Productions. Tonight's drama was adapted for radio by John C. Alzadek and Dana Perry Hayes from the short story by Henry Kupner. Damon Crawl was Old Masson, Christopher Duva was Simmons, and Dana Perry Hayes was Mrs. Prynne. I'm Damon Crawl. Next week at this time, tune in again for another study in Suspense.